Hi guys, Summers here, and today I'm going to focus my attention on McLaren's 2020 Challenger, the MCL35. Now perhaps the first thing to note, at least from an aesthetic point of view, is their switch to matte paint, which really sharpens the papier orange against the blue and black contrasts. Your attention is then immediately drawn to the nose as the team continues to search for the narrow cape sweet spot. Casting off the tri inlet snout design of 2018 and 2019, the team have retained the wide and long front wing pillar stance and will also use a more conventional nose tip shape in order to comply with the regs. These long pillars help to create the cape shaping and also feature three slots to energise the airflow moving between the surfaces. But whilst there has been changes here, it's at the front suspension where things start to get really interesting. With the lower wishbones placed extremely high, whilst the upper wishbone is still fixed at a high position too, as they continue to use the upright extension. This novel suspension arrangement is clearly about aerodynamic performance, and will undoubtedly give the airflow a clearer path to the floor and barge boards behind. There's no sign of a pushrod on upright solution thus far though. Although having tested numerous variants of this last season, I'm sure you might see it again at some point, especially given the aero gains that can be made from it. The barge boards and side pod deflectors shown in this launch teaser are very similar to the ones that we saw at the tail end of last season, and with numerous changes made ahead and after of them, I expect to see something different being tested in the next two weeks. The team continues to employ a similar side pod design from last season, but it appears the designers have been given a little bit more latitude in terms of aero versus cooling, shrinking things down a little more for aerodynamic performance, especially down beneath with a nice undercut that will allow flow to fold around the central portion of the car. This is made possible due to gains made by Renault and their findings about how they can lean on power unit and cooling solutions to get the best overall performance from the car. Having said that, the MCL35 does appear a little baggy around the waist and hips when compared with the top three. Again, this is likely due to the Renault power unit and moreover the odds on use of an air to air cooler arrangement rather than a liquid cooled setup like the top three have. Now for me personally, the most interesting feature has to be the airbox. The bulb shaped design is split into four main sections with more baffles hidden away inside to divert airflow to the various sources that require it. Interestingly, the top of the airbox also leans forward quite dramatically too, casting a shadow over the top of the driver and undoubtedly aiding in not only capturing flow off the halo and the driver's helmet, but also ramming it down the throat of the various inlets. The engine cover is also raised up quite high, not only in an attempt to funnel more airflow into the coke bottle region, but also in order to cater for some of the ERS coolers and ancillaries mounted up and around the power unit itself. A small outlet is also present on the spine of the engine cover and this will just assist in releasing heat generated within. As we've already seen at the front of the car and also on the Red Bull RB16, the rear suspension is pretty high, with the lower wishbone raised as high as possible in order to free the airflow's path over the floor. Not much has changed in terms of the rear wing, with McLaren already pretty aggressive when it comes to their design. However, it is worth noting the folded leading edge on the upper corner of the end plate, something we've seen done in various degrees by Alfa Romeo and Toro Rosso last season. All in all, the MCL35 looks like a solid contender and should see the team vying for the best of the rest slot once more. Thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this short insight. If you have, be sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content in the future. Thanks for watching this short insight on the McLaren MCL35. If you've enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more technical Formula 1 content in the future.